Right, I am live. I'm looking in a really weird spot right now just because I'm setting up my other computer. Just bear with me. All right, let me pause this. So I don't get any loop. And we should be good. All right, so we got some people here already. Thanks for joining in. Am I in shot? I think I am. Awesome. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Everything looks good on this side. Uh, we've got Zach. Greg, thanks man, thanks for the compliments. Glad you enjoyed the videos. Uh, Bill, Diego, uh, Darren, how man? How, hi, is what I was trying to say. I was gonna say howdy and then I went to hi. Uh, Greg says he's still playing guitar here in Cali. Awesome stuff, what's up from Jake? Niles, welcome. Dylan, new amp, keen to see what it is, absolutely. We've got uh, Dan of NJ from New Jersey. Just picked up my new phone. That's from Jones. Awesome stuff. Uh, hello from Bend, Oregon. I haven't heard of that place before. But then again, there's about three billion places I haven't heard of before. I've heard of Oregon, but not of uh, Bend. Uh, Gabriel, Jeff, howdy from California. I just subscribed today. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Um, I have pretty much almost daily content coming up. Three to five videos a day. Uh, a day, a week, I should say. Uh, so yeah, welcome. There's gonna be a good mix of stuff coming up. I've got a few shootouts on the way and uh, a few other things as well, so. All right, that tally has me thinking seriously about a double cut tally at Sky Music, damn you. Uh, that's actually really cool, man. I, I like that guitar. That new Fender series, the um, alternative reality ones or whatever they're called, I can't remember the names. I can't remember everything, but they're actually really cool. I, I think the Strat that looks the same shape as a Telecaster looks really great. Neil, welcome, man. How are you? We've got uh, John. John, I got your email. I will reply a bit later on. I saw it uh, as I was on my way out today, so I'll get back to you. So I'll take you up on that offer. Thank you. Um, Zach, is that the Raven you see in the corner? Yeah, it is. Yeah, the Raven's here. So today was a bit of a, a monumental day for me in, in many ways. <laughs> I thought I'd share this with you guys and explain a little bit about what's going on. So uh, someone just said, uh, it was it a katana? No, it's not a katana. Uh, Jamal, welcome, man. How are you? All right, so I'll, uh, I'll do some more shout outs a bit later. I'll just explain a little bit about why I got what I got. It's actually right off camera here. Un unboxed at the moment, so it's still boxed up. And uh, what, is it? what is that? Just, should I have just said boxed? Boxed, maybe. Um, so as you know, on my channel, I've been using the Fender Blues Deluxe now for ever. <laughs> I love this amp. I've had two of them. And I'll get to that monumental day for me in a, in a moment. So behind me here, I have a Kemper, which is on loan. So um, Sky Music are nice enough to sort of like let, let me borrow that for a little while. I want to get a video of that done at some point as well. But that's actually not... I was thinking about getting one of these, but... Um, I think there's a misconception that the Kempers make everything sound good, which isn't entirely accurate either. Um, so I, that's not what I ended up getting. So I, I bought something today I've never bought anything of before. <laughs> and I'm gonna explain why I chose this one over the other ones, and then I'll show you what it is. So I actually got a Marshall. I bought a Marshall DSL 40, one of the new ones. So uh, let me show you this. This is it. That's it, boxed right now. So um, I'll talk you why, talk you through why I got it, and then um, people can let me know what you think of it as well. So the first thing was I'm trying to find where I left my scissors. Isn't that always the way? I'll use my chicken pick. It should work. No. All right. So let me grab some scissors. I'm on wireless, so I can still talk. So the reason I went for this one over the twenty. The main reason was uh, I, I can still use it live being in that it's 40 watts and it drops down to 20 watts. So that's really cool. The thing that um, I like about this one more than the 20, and this is just a personal opinion thing, is this one actually has a V-type Celestian speaker as opposed to the Celestian 7080s. Now, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you know I'm not a huge fan of those speakers. It's cool to like them if you like them, but I don't like them. Uh, Ryan and I actually played this the other day. 
and we were really getting into it. So I thought, you know what? This might be a really good amp as a point of difference on the channel as opposed to just the Blues Deluxe. Now, I love my Blues Deluxe. It's going nowhere. What I thought I would do on, you know how I'm using like multiple clips or multiple guitars on a lot of the intros? So maybe I can shoot some clean stuff with the Fender and then use the drive channel on this to shoot some other stuff with different guitars. So it'll essentially just be adding to the, the sound, the, you know, the overall you know, production in a sense, but also something that I know is gonna be loud enough to use live and also something that I know I'm not gonna to have to upgrade the speaker in because these V-type speakers are great. So the monumental day is me actually never having owned a Marshall before. Um, I like the DSL-20, I like the head, I like the combo, and for some reason that um, Celestian 7080 didn't actually sound very bad in that amp, it actually sounded quite good, but sometimes in a live mix I feel like 7080s aren't the best choice in the world. They're not bad in that amp, but for me personally, I like the V-Type Celestian speakers a whole lot more. So I thought we'd unbox this, I'll show you a little bit about it, and then some of the things that I, and I also noticed about this one is it seems to have like four channels almost. You get like two on each sort of side. So yeah, I know it probably doesn't make much sense, but there's like a green and a red channel on both the classic gain and the ultra gain. And I kind of like the lower gain on both. Oh, actually the higher gain on the, anyway, let's get rid of this first. See, if, oh, I'm on a different chair to what I'm normally on. Let's grab this out. All right, maybe not. It's stuck in there. I'm gonna have to chuck it on the floor. And the other reason I like this amp, I guess as well, is the fact that it's not too heavy. It's not as heavy as my Blues Deluxe, but it's about the same weight as my PB Bandit. Maybe slightly heavier, but it wouldn't be much heavier. So, God, these boxes, man. <laughs> Let's see what that is as well. So we're gonna do a quick look at this. This video won't go for like three hours or anything, but I'll shoot a proper video of it, or you'll see this pop up, um, you know, on the channel coming up. So sorry to ignore the comments there, guys. I'll take a few, I'll have a look and see if I missed any questions. <laughs> Thanks, Dano. Dan of NJ, uh, Sonic, Pepsi, yeah, absolutely. I've cut the energy drinks out completely, 100% done with them. So I found out the energy drink I was having had something like eight times the caffeine of one of these. So it was bad. Uh, Glistening Cabana. <laughs> Where do you come up with these names? Um, says I'm uh, not a fan of uh, 70, 80 speakers. Yeah, me either. Look. They can sound okay in some amps. I just think there's a lot of better alternatives. If a lot of people don't like those particular, or, or an amp with that speaker in there, but they kind of like the amp, put a different speaker in there. It makes a massive difference. My vintage modern weighs a ton. Yeah, all right, so Sonia says, thanks for that. I read the review in one of the guitar magazines said it had uh, four channels. Yeah, so the Classic Gain has a has a switch. You can switch between green and uh, red. And then you've got like overdrive one and two on the, excuse me, on the ultra gain setting. And another great thing about it too, we have two master volumes. So you can set your clean volume up to one specific spot and then set your master two, which can be your overdrive setting to a different volume. So you can have your, you can literally set, it's not just, a lot of amps won't have that particular feature. So, well, sometimes they do, it just depends on, on the amp. But I like the fact you can essentially choose which master gain you want up at whatever volume per channel. So, you know, you can have your clean at a good rhythm volume or your crunch channel at a specific volume. Um, and also, I gotta say the 20 watt or the low mode on here is actually really good as well. So I thought this would be a really great um, addition to the lineup of stuff. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, I probably did, I got a Two Notes Torpedo Live that I shoot all of my, basically all of my 
pedal demos that I use the Blues Deluxe on, I use, eh, not all, but most, I use the two notes for. Um, anytime I'm demoing amps, I obviously don't use it. But I can reference this or run a profile of the amp or buy a little patch, uh, impulse response for this particular speaker, and then I'm away. I'll be able to use it in the same sort of way. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's rip off the, uh, the plastic cover. Well, I'll bring this up a little closer in a moment for you. So DSL 40s, this was the, like the fifth reason I went for this. A lot of people seem to like this for blues. Like there's a lot of guys who play like, you know, your Stevie Ray stuff or your, your Gary Moore or even lower gain stuff. I've seen guys use these and swear by them for, um, for playing blues. The one thing I noticed, one of the channels on here is a lot brighter than the rest. It's luckily though, the channel I'm gonna use least. So I found sort of having the mids and bass up to about here is pretty cool. In a straight up comparison of oomph compared to my 6L6s in the uh, Blues Deluxe, this felt really big. So I got 240 watt amps. Um, yeah, let me know if you think this will be uh, a decent addition to, to the videos, to the channel. Um, I plan on using this, not on every video, but on videos where I think I'm either gonna be demoing something with humbuckers and I wanna rock and gain tone without having to set up a whole lot of pedals and just something that I think people are familiar with, which that I like as well, but something that people are kind of familiar with and how they sound. So um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So same as the basically some of the others that I've demoed already, inputs on the left on this, which is cool. Uh, we have the reverb here, classic and ultra. I'm gonna have to find out exactly what the deal is with that, but I'm guessing one's wetter than the other. <laughs> Resonance and presence uh, just sort of changes the low end bloom of the amp, I guess, and the, the top end as well. So three band EQ, gain and volume, gain and volume. What's that stuff? We got some plastic under the knob. And uh, yeah, so there we go. What's on the back? Ugh. All right, what do we got on the back? So we've got an FX loop, which is cool. We have foot switch uh, jack, emulated out as well, which I'm gonna actually try. That's one thing that I don't think I've seen much of on YouTube at the moment is how that emulated out sounds. So I'll give it a go and we'll see if it actually sounds any good or not. Um, like I said, I got to, I'm lucky enough to have a two-note torpedo. It's a professional speaker replacement, basically. So I, I wouldn't use this for demos, but when I actually review the amp, um, I'll, I'll do that. So for those who have just joined, we've got like 130 people here. I actually went out and bought this. So this wasn't a freebie or anything. This is something that I thought I'd add to the channel uh, just to improve and change up the sound for this year as well as using it in conjunction with my Blues Deluxe on intro clips and all that kind of stuff and guitar demos. Because as much as I prefer the Fender sound, this rocks. <laughs> it does something really cool. So uh, yeah, I figure, you know, it might break up the same old thing anyway. So we've got two or four ohm and two eight ohm outputs. So that's what I'll essentially be using in the two notes. I'll just be like disconnecting the speaker jack from here and running an eight ohm straight into straight into my two notes over there. So uh, yeah, one times eight ohm, sorry. Yeah, so I'll be running one of these ones out into the uh, two notes from there. So we've got Celestian, yeah, G12. Uh, hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna struggle lifting this up and showing you like, but yeah, you can see the speaker in the back. It's got the EL34s, all that kind of stuff. So that, that is it. Now we'll open up the little um, package it comes with it as well. So Pancakes McGee says, <laughs> these names are awesome. Um, hey Shane, what do you think about the Bugera V22? I think they're good little amps. I played one when I was doing some gigs in San Francisco, like 2010 or something maybe, and it sounded pretty good. They weigh a ton though, so just be, be cautious of the weight. They might have changed that over the years, but tone-wise they're good. Plastic under the knob sounds uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, it was. I don't know what that was, but yeah, I, 
<laughs> it does sound uncomfortable. Uh, amp has a power cut, yeah. So you can take it from 40 watts to 20 watts, which is another really cool reason I wanted this. If I'm playing at a low... See, I don't really need another amp for low volume situations, but there might be times where I, I want to actually mic this up at home. So 20 watts is better than 40 watts for that kind of stuff. Um, it's funny, I did a, a... On the Katana video that I posted recently, once you increase the volume in post-production, once you switch the, the amp power down, you tend to not notice any tonal differences. It's more just a volume thing, so. Uh, you never need a new reason a reason to get new gear. That's from Kyle, thanks man. Um, so yeah, this is one of the, the new models. I think someone just asked that as well. So yeah, I played this the other day. Ryan was looking for some stuff and we were just having to play around. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give one of these a go and I plugged in and uh, Ryan had a go and he's like, man, I'm digging this amp. I said, yeah, me too. This is why we shouldn't go to the shop. <laughs> so, uh, we get a power cable, obviously, nothing new there. We get some instructions, which I don't know if I'll ever read. Let's check out this, this is what I wanted to find out. All right, so we've got a two button foot switch, which is cool. Let's see if this is gonna focus. Oh, I got an auto focus, oh no, manual focus. So. Channel and effects loop, easy. And that's it, so that's all you get. And that's really all you need. It handles good, it's sort of like a big thick rubber thing, uh, steel reinforced, unlike the old dog bones that break real easy. So um, yeah, looking forward to giving this a shot and probably using it for some guitar demos as well. I've had a request to grab certain guitars to do reviews of, so that's what I'm gonna be doing as well. Did you try the Origin series? I haven't. Um, they're not around yet in Australia. I just feel like even if they're great, people know this amp in terms of how they sound, which I think might be a better choice for something. Uh, I'm just laughing at a comment here. Um, just based on what people know. I, I, you know, not everyone will know how the Origin series sound. I'm sure they're great amps as well. I had one of the guys that works there said, you know, you don't want to wait for the new one. I said, no, I think based on what I heard of this and based on it being like a classic Marshall kind of sound, I thought, you know what, this will do, this will be fine. I second uh, the running it with the Fender amps simultaneously. Oh yeah, well actually, that's something, I always wanted to do a video on running two amps. I did one like 10 years ago and it was crap and I think I took it down, but um, yeah. I, I really like, I, like I said, I can see people um, putting some good comments in here. So um, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you think this would be a good choice as well. That's awesome. Lando, how are you man? Jerry Schofield, welcome. Yeah, if you just joined, actually, I want to I want to make a couple of you guys moderators as well, just in case Terry can't be there. So if you don't want to be a moderator, that's fine. <laughs> uh, we will you just let me know after the fact, and I can take you off. Is this gonna work? Hey, do D U B R Duba. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Just use the super chat. If you got any specific question, let me know, and I'll happily answer it for you. Uh, I try to anyway, but yeah. So this is the new this is the new addition to the to the household. <laughs> I this is my first Marshall amp ever. What tipped me over the edge was the Marshall Twenty Head. I, I really like the sound of that. It's all subjective, but I think if I had have spent more time with it, other than I had like forty five minutes to shoot that video, <laughs> uh, I would have been able to get some really great sounds out of it and just. You know, I say acoustically, but just plugging this in gave me the kind of sounds that I, I'm familiar with, but also I can get a lot more dirty sounds out of this as well. So, thanks, Lando. Cheers, man. There you go. I made you a moderator as well, mate. I might uh, add a couple of other folks in here. Sonia as well, possibly. Um, so, all right, I'll take some questions for the next. Uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or something, but I just thought, you know what, I'll do a quick, concise kind of video about why I bought this, and you know, people will see it coming up on the channel. And uh, yeah, you know, like I said at the start, I actually purchased this, this wasn't like a freebie or anything like that. So 
I wanted something that I think not only that I liked, but I think people can relate to in terms of, you know, tones that are different from the Fender. So that, that was, there was a lot of things going on. So it was that mixed with being able to use it with my two notes and just being able to gig with it if I choose to. And it has a good speaker in there already. So uh, <laughs> Greg just said he's going to buy one too. Good stuff. That, you know what? Go play one. And there's one of, one of the two channels on here on the ultra gain setting is, isn't as good as the, the other channels in my opinion. And I think the red channel on this clean crunch channel Red, the red channels rocking. So uh, it, it it kind of almost sounds like your favorite overdrive distortion on on a clean tone. It's got that big round sound. So yeah, I dig it. Thanks, JJ's. Appreciate that, man. Did you see Pete Thorne's video on the Fender Super? Uh, got some sick tones. I, I think I saw a thumbnail pop up. I'm subscribed to him, but I, I don't know if I've watched it yet. I've been really busy the last couple of weeks just editing, and I don't find a lot of time to watch a lot of stuff guitar oriented. But he's a great player. Um, his videos are awesome. So yeah, supers are, supers are awesome amps too. What cab would I pair with this amp? Uh, I, I wouldn't personally do that because I don't need to, but if you were going to, I'd probably just get another single 12. It would sit on top fine and it would look cool. I, I do know some of their 212 cabs also stack tall as opposed to stacking wide, so that would work too. <laughs> Terry says, you don't need that, I'd be willing to take it off your hands free of charge. Thanks mate, I appreciate that. Will you do a Marshall versus Fender video? That's an interesting thought. Maybe like the pros and cons of, of each. I, I like that idea. Um, I need to get familiar with this first. So if I do a video like that, it might be a little while off, uh, maybe a couple of weeks. I've got stuff scheduled for the next three weeks almost now. I'm gonna have one week of videos that are very different as well coming up. I think not next week, but the week after. Just some tutorials and all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, if you're getting a little geared out, which is understandable, I'll have some different stuff. But I also have the Squire Contemporary Series video going up in the next couple of days. Uh, that's the new Squire's Dual Humbucker Strat. Uh, and, and it's great, it's really cool. So that, that'll be coming up as well. I think I might have a Katana Artist with my tax return. That's awesome, man. Those Artist Katanas are so good. They really, I don't think I've ever played a modeling amp and felt like that playing it. I, it was, it's really, really good. The video probably didn't do it justice tone-wise either. Uh, if you go and play one of them, they're extremely loud. I, I would say it would be louder than this. Um, and it should be, it's 100 watts, but the speaker's good. So that's usually the solid state amps have problems keeping up because they're usually cheap and nasty speakers. But that the Katana Artist is brutally loud. Like it's, it's ridiculously loud. If you've ever experienced a PV Bandit on upwards of like uh, one o'clock on the volume, the uh, katanas are way louder. A shootout will be nice, cool. Denny's plant-based journey says, uh, thanks for the info on Donna pedals. I just bought several, cool, good stuff. Donna make great stuff. I, I get a lot of messages on Facebook. I should really put together like a frequently asked questions video about Donna pedals uh, and pedals in general because I see a lot of the same questions coming out. What would I buy if I had could get one of these or one of these, that, that sort of video. So I might do that and then just I can just shoot links to people. That would be uh, easier. Was the JVM too expensive? I, I didn't even try it. Um, a while back with Rick, we tested out a whole lot of Marshall amps and I didn't. none of them really spoke to me. That was before like the, the new DSL series came out. We tried the bass breakers and a few others and I didn't really like any of them. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I figured this kind of ticked a lot of boxes for me, not only doing what I do on YouTube, but also being able to use it into, you know, my two notes and also being able to take it out live. That, that half power mode is also great. I hear rationalizations are none needed. Yeah, yeah, I know, but people come and go with the stream. So I just like to repeat myself sometimes. 
Uh, is the Two Notes Torpedo a good investment for a home guitarist or more of a home recording video production? Yeah, they're basically just for recording. I wouldn't use it for any other reason. You can use them live, but you need to plug them into a sound card. And someone asked me what sound card I'm using. I've got a UR, UR22 MK2 from Steinberg. And that's my main sound card. I'm just going in with this little mic. Um, so yeah, you, they're a home recording tool or a studio tool. They replace the speaker. So you basically, the speaker becomes the digital reference of the speaker and then you can move the mic around in the space. They're actually really, really cool. The demo or review I did of it wasn't probably as thorough as it needed to be. That might be another video I do better coming up and now I can actually have a few different amps on the video as well. So um, yeah, but this, it's not something that you use just for playing guitar at home. There's, I don't even think there's a, well, there is a headphones out on the front, but it's not that sort of unit. I'm really considering a Blues Cube Hot, that's from Jones. Uh, great little amps, really loud. I, I think they're awesome, nice and light. Uh, they keep up, or they're even more, slightly louder than I, I would say a Blues Junior is. And the only one thing about them is they, they've got a really small cabinet, you know, but test them out and try it because I think for the most part, they're easily loud enough. The Katana 100 212, uh, would you use any pedals of it or just use the software? I don't think you need to use any pedals with it. You, you can, I mean, the clean channel's great. And I didn't test out the 212, I only had the 112. Uh, I don't think they've got the, I don't think I've tried the 212 actually. No, but you can do it either way. A mate of mine's got the single uh, 12 version and he uses a tube screamer into the clean tone. It sounds great. So uh, it's, it's up to you which one you like better. The advantage of using analog pedals, and this is what I've said from day one about any of the katanas, is you can just look on the floor and turn something and make it sound different. Um, and that's the one limitation of modeling amps. You've got to either go through menus or um, hook it up to a computer. So that's, that's the one big thing. If you've already got pedals, you can use them, but um, you could probably just set it, set it up at gig volume. If you're gonna be playing loud gigs, always set up modeling amps at the volume you're gonna be playing live. And you'll find you'll get a much more responsive sound when you play out live at a proper volume. You won't need to tweak anything. Um, ever played an orange CR60? I haven't, I haven't tried one. Uh, orange amps I have access to actually, but I haven't grabbed any yet. So I tell you what, maybe we'll do an orange week where <laughs> I'll do, I don't know, four or five orange amps in a week and we can see what they sound like. Is the cab on the new amp MDF or plywood? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I would maybe assume it's MDF because it's not an expensive amp. Um, but I didn't notice any issues with, with that. So uh, yeah, look, I, I don't know. That, that's, a, that's a good question. I would say if you check Marshall's website, they probably have that kind of spec off the, on there. Or if not, go to like Sweetwater. That's where I reference a lot of um, information from because they've always got more than some of the websites. I can't even shop on Sweetwater because I'm in Australia, but they, they, their website's usually pretty good. Any updates on the album? All right, so I did a JJ Kale uh, tribute album a while back and I finished some songs. I'm like three of them are done. Uh, because I, I, it's hard doing all of what I do on YouTube almost daily and then still have the energy or time to put into the album, but I am adding to it slowly. Usually, if I've got a few days spare, I'll, I'll sit down and I'll do some stuff. Um, I wanna get at least half of that album finished pretty soon. That would be the plan. Um, and then I can hopefully have the rest done, you know, in a couple of months. But the plan is whenever that's done, it'll be free for everybody on YouTube. I'll, I'll put a video up with a link and you can click download. It won't cost anything. You can just have it. Um, being that it's a cover album, I don't even wanna go through any of the legal stuff with it. So it'll just literally be a free, a free download to, to everyone who's subscribed or who isn't subscribed, who sees the link. <laughs> I picked up the Pride of Texas 
on Guitar Center used for 55 bucks. That is awesome. I'll show you something. So I did a gig last Friday and I changed up my pedal board. So it's a mess right now. But I put this on the on my board and I found when I was in a live situation, the volume was down most of the way. It's, this pedal is so loud, I had no idea. That's the one limitation of the two notes. I don't get a good reference of volume uh, because I'm listening back through studio speakers. But when, when I had this at 12 o'clock and I clicked the pedal and I almost killed everybody in the room. So um, these are probably my two favorite out of that range. Pride of Texas, great, speak, uh, great speaker, great pedal, stacked well with this as well. Um, and I tried the Big Spender, which is the Leslie simulation uh, pedal. And uh, I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really, really musical. So Pride of Texas is a great, it's a great overdrive. It's, it's very different, which is kind of what I like about it. It's got a real gnarly uh, punch to it. All right, Kenneth says, looking at a low volume Fender, Fender or Marshall tube head. Why can't I talk today? Home use, what would be your choice? Uh, it just depends what you like the sound of more. There's no right or wrong for that kind of thing. If you like the Marshall sound, you want more dirt, go for the Marshall sound. If you want, if you like nicer cleans, go for the Fender. Fender's dirty channel isn't, oh, well, sometimes they've got different models on them depending on which one you want to get. But I oh, said tube, so yeah, look, most of the Fender dirty channels aren't great. That's why I always use the clean on that amp back there because it's so good. But if you just want a really cool dirty channel to start with, the, the low volume Marshalls are great. I had a lot of fun with that one watt one. I thought that was awesome. Uh, but yeah, it had no clean, had literally no clean at all. Another one to choose would be, I got the Bugera V5 Infinium. I think that's a great little practice amp. It could have a little bit more tops, but um, yeah, that's about it. I'm finding the beard strange. I don't know, people seem to like it, I like it. I'm gonna go with it till the end of the month and see how I feel. I gotta get my passport renewed though, so it might see an early demise, we'll see. What amp would I recommend for beginners? Um, that's a good question. I would get something that, I'd probably look on the used market first, buy something secondhand. Um, as to what, it, it really just comes down to, if you're just playing at home and you have, you just want something to practice with, you can pretty much choose anything you like uh, within reason. Um, you know, Vox make a, if you just want a small practice amp, a really great one is the Vox Pathfinder 15R. It's a great little practice amp. But if you want something that you can take out and play live, you need to start thinking about either a solid state amp that's 50 watts or more, preferably like 100, or a valve amp that's 30 watts or more. And it will give you, a, you know, that'll be loud enough to take out. So it just depends on what I would do is listen to the guys or find out what some of the guys that you like to listen to, what they use and, and start there because depending on what, you listen to will probably affect what you like the sound of obviously so for me when i was going through all the diff different amps my reference tone was a specific player with a specific guitar and i tried to dial that in with whatever i had so um yeah it's a it's a, not an easy question but i i would look at what your guitar heroes play if you've got one and then try and find something that works uh, do I ever use the Bayang OD8 anymore? I don't. I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. Back a while back, I, I was like having to sell stuff to kind of make ends meet. I'm still doing that to some extent now, but um, a lot of that, yeah, I love that pedal. I think it's arguably one of my best Tube Screamer type pedals I've ever used. I, I really dig it. I still get messages today on Facebook and YouTube about it. But um, I've got, I think at that particular time, I had like three other Tube Screamers, <laughs> so... Supersonic 2, uh, 22 has a great dirty channel. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the exceptions to the rule. There was a Fender Twin that came out uh, many years ago, uh, maybe eight or nine years ago, called the Twin. And that had a really rockin' drive sound on it, man. It's the only Twin I know of that had a great dirty tone. 
It's very Tommy Castro-ish in its voicing. I love that amp. It was really cool. You couldn't lift it, but it sounded good. Pepsi Max versus Diet Pepsi. I'll take the Max. Now, for those who aren't in Australia, Pepsi Max in the US tastes nothing like ours. It's very different. I don't know if it's just the water, but there's something in the ingredients that make ours taste way better. How many watts is the DSL 40? I'll, I'll give you a guess. <sighs> 40 watts, down to 20. You can also use it at 20 watts as well. Sonia says, I've used the Champion 100 for a lot of, a lot of fill, oh, full volume. And it's, I'm not sure exactly what you mean there. And it sells for 349 in the US. I use a five watt silver tone in the bedroom. Uh, use pedals with both. Cool. So the Fender Champion 100 is a really great amp. Actually, I got asked before, what's a good amp for a beginner? That would be a great amp for a beginner. Uh, the, the Fender Champion series, like the 40, just for playing at home, or if you plan on playing out live, the 100 should be way loud enough as well. So they're a really great amp. Uh, that's an amp I could take out and play a gig with if I chose to, put on a clean sound, use my pedals, be laughing. Neil says, I've known you for a long time and it looks different. Yeah, it looks different. I, I don't know, I just thought I'd give it a go. I said to my family the other week, I said, oh, oh, about a month ago, I said, I'm gonna grow a beard this year just to see how it looks. They're like, hey, that'd be really cool. But the trick is to make the beard look good. You gotta keep the, the balding head short. I need to do that today. Uh, for a bedroom, I have an Egnator Tweaker 15 and a Rebel 30 with an attenuator. They're both good amps. Uh, the Tweaker, from memory, allows you to just about do everything with it. And so does the Egnator, actually. The Egnator Re Re uh, Rebel 30 had, has a, what do they have? You can go from 6L6 valves to EL84s or something like that. I had one of them for a little while. All right. Um, I have the older generation DSL 40Cs. I only think you could be better with the reverb, otherwise a great amp. Okay. Shane, I can send you the LP. Oh, hang on, the chat just scrolled. Let me have a look. The, uh, the well, LPD 68 to review. I reckon you'll dig it. I don't know what that is. What is that? Shoot me a, a email at intheblues at outlook.com if you wanna get in touch. That's probably the easiest way. All right, so yeah, that was pretty much the video for t today. I, unless anyone else has any last questions, feel free to, to ask for those who have just joined. I know people come and go. Um, we now have a Marshall DSL 40C in, in the collection for using it for demos, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna mix it up between the Fender and the, and the Marshall, which is my first, first Marshall. That sounds sacrilegious to my long-term uh, Fender snobbery, but um, yeah. What turned you on to the Joe Barton tally pickups? Uh, my friend Rick had them in his and I was like, man, those pickups sound great. What are they? <laughs> and then I found out how much they were. I've still kept them. Actually, they're, uh, they're in a little box over there. I'm not gonna get rid of them. The day will come where I'll probably get another Telecaster and keep the one that I've got. But I think having, I go through phases with gear. I, like, I really like something, then I don't use it for a while. And then I go back, and, use it again so I think when I end up getting a second tally at some point that's where the Bardens will go they'll go in that Telecaster I'm a beginner and thinking of buying a Strat under 500 bucks any recommendations yep get a used made in Mexico Strat from Fender you'd be laughing a really great choice uh, they're probably in the US I don't know where you're from but in Australia you can find them for about 500 bucks used in the States, I think they're less than that new, so. Someone asked about a good first delay pedal. Um, it depends. I would go for something that has a few different sounds at no extra expense, so probably the Boss DD7. It's got analog, digital, uh, it's got reverse delay, it's got a whole lot of different delays on there. It might not be the cheapest pedal, but a lot of good delay pedals aren't cheap. The Boss DD7 does everything. It's got all the delays you could possibly want, 
So if you get bored with one, you can switch it to something else. I think that's really cool. It's got tap tempo as well. Uh, it does everything really, really well. Uh, oh yeah, Tony just said uh, Squire Classic Vibe. There you go, there's another great guitar. Absolutely. One of the best guitars I played this year was that Squire Classic Vibe 50s one. I, I, I reckon it's great. Are you going to get an American Original Strat? Uh, not right now. No, I can't really afford to be doing just buying everything that I like. I'd, I'd love to get that left-handed 50s Strat. It was awesome. The 60s Strat video will be up in two days, I think, from now. Um, I like the 50s one more. The 60s one was good, but the 50s one was just great. I played it again the other day um, to, while I was testing out some amps. And it was awesome. But I just can't get in the habit of, of just uh, buying everything I like. I, I can't afford to do that. All right, so uh, another really nice guitar we found that I didn't know about was uh, the Made in Mexico Strat, the Jimi Hendrix one with the reversed headstock. It sounds and plays really well. I mean, I couldn't play it because it was right-handed, but uh, Ryan, who you've seen on my channel in the PRS video and all that, as well as the other videos he's been in, uh, he he really, really liked it, which was something to be said because he, he doesn't usually go for less boutique sort of stuff but yeah he he said that was a really great guitar too so i'll see if i can get a review done on that coming up too so i got 133 people 135 here cool if you're enjoying the stream give it a thumbs up guys appreciate that uh daniel says uh, on what speakers in the dsl 40 so it, it's actually a v type celestian speaker it's not the 7080 i wouldn't have probably purchased it if it was the 7080. Um, yeah, the V-type Celestians are, are pretty cool. They're pretty cool. They seem to have um, an, like plenty, of, They, you know what, the speaker in this kind of feels a little bit like my Swamp Thing speaker, which is probably why I liked it. It's got a very edgy sort of sound and it's, it's got a lot of low end response, a big magnet. It's a, it's a speaker that you don't need to, Oh, I wouldn't feel the need to upgrade anyway. So, hey, Robert, thanks, dude. <laughs> Far out, man. <laughs> if you have any questions, mate, let us know. Um, and yeah, happy happy to help. But I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Lago, is it Lago or Iago? It says uh, it's two twenty four in Brazil. So catch you later. See you later, man. Thanks for hanging out. Have I ever played an? Ibanez custom agent from the early 70s. No, I'm not sure I know what that one is either. Um, a couple of friends of mine have old Ibanez guitars. I'm gonna see if maybe we can, I can talk them into doing some videos on them. They're from the 70s as well, so they're really cool. Looking forward to seeing the original 60s video. Uh, from my hand, the 60s felt better. And th this is the thing too, it's totally subjective. I, I like the neck more on the 50s, but I, a mate of mine that I know, I've known for years, he hates 50s style necks. He prefers the 60s vibe. So there's uh, basically, it's all personal choice. Yeah, I, I put together a pretty good video, I hope, for the 60s one as well. So um, I, reckon, I reckon it should answer most of the questions. Yeah, John says, right-handed only, Jimmy Tribute. Don't get me started. Why would Fender release a right-handed only Jimi Hendrix guitar? It doesn't make any sense. It just makes no sense. Terry, yes, I've just seen you when you, you were streaming and popped on. I must say I'm kind of shocked you got it after how well you... Hang on. I, I must say I'm kind of a little shocked you got it after how you said it takes pedals and whatnot. Okay, so I said the one watt amp doesn't take pedals very well. And it doesn't, it's not like a, a one watt amp can't handle any, any type of pedals, a 40 watt amp can. There's no, it's not even close. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a great sounding amp. And the idea is too, to just use it on one of the channels every now and then on an intro clip. And I can also take it out and play it live. That, that's the plan. Thoughts on DSL heads or combos? Uh, if going the head route, what what cabs would be good? So if you're going to buy a head, you've pretty much got unlimited 
landscape of things to pick and then it's up to what you like the sound of the best. Cab size is a huge thing. The bigger the cab is, the bigger the amp is gonna sound. The smaller it is, the lighter it is, but also the smaller the overall sound is. And I guess you can pick whether or not you want closed back or open back cabs. Closed back are very different tone wise to open back amps. They just are. And although this is mostly a closed back cab, I think, yeah, not really. It's sort of ported at the bottom as well. So, you know, when we tried the the uh, the J mod amp, it was a closed back cab. Um, sometimes I find that just too directionally punchy. But I guess you've got the flexibility then to go buy whatever type of cab you like the sound of more. So if you're into more of a spread, get something with an open back. Um, that's kind of what I like the most. But nothing wrong with closed back. It's all like personal choice again, so. With the tax season in the US, I think an Arctic white made in Mexican Strat is in my future. Definitely inspired by yours, Lefty. Thanks for doing the good work. Hey, thanks Ryan, cheers man. And that's another reason too, like when, like off camera I shot, I did a shootout between mine and the 60s one. There's a difference in the tone, but you know, I'm still gonna sound the same playing the other guitars I would mind. So that's why I, I, I just said, you know what? I'm keeping my Strat. That, it does something that the other one didn't do as well in terms of the in-between hum canceling position. So um, yeah, I'm a big fan. Uh, so for right-handed Jimmy Tribute, does that mean if a lefty flip it like Jimmy did to play, it left you would actually be correct. Yeah, I think you could be right. <laughs> it's a pretty confusing question, but yeah, I think you're right. So Bobby, I ended up getting the Marshall DSL 40C, which will be used on the channel for, for intro clips and demos. And if I, do, like recently I got some uh, volume boost pedals, this would have been a better choice using it with this amp on a dirty channel than using the Fender Blues Deluxe Dirty Channel, which is terrible. It's a good last resort drive channel, but you know I can pretty much pick and choose now between what I like, what pedals I demo. I'm one video I need to finish. Right, I got a delay pedal back here. This um, Citec one. I went to start filming it this morning, and then I was like, I need a change of sound, man. I started filming it, and I went, time for a change. So I'll do the clean sound just to give away what I'll, I'll be doing. The clean sound, I'll run it into the Blues Deluxe, and when I play my lead, I'll run it into the Marshall. And you'll hear two separate sounds sonically that will be hopefully uh, pretty cool. How do I get the cream badge type sound? Uh, so if you're talking about the that intro, you just get a chorus pedal. I think Clapton plays a pretty bog standard sort of chorus from what I remember. Um, yeah, most chorus pedals should give you that uh, do, 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 that that part. If you can play it, you'll be able to get it out of any chorus pedal. Um. All right, I've got the DSL twenty HR and no hiss. Cool. Oh, that's from Landon. Yeah, Landon. Yeah, check out his channel, folks. Lando posted a a couple of. Um, videos on the new Marshall head as well. He, he purchased one as well, so uh, check him out. All right, guys, we might wrap it up. I want to keep this under an, an hour. I'll leave the, the video up for a bit. I'll just take a couple more questions here. If anyone has any, any more, just let me know and I'll answer a few more. Uh, thoughts on the Universal Audio Aux? I think it looks great. So for those who don't know what that is, it's kind of like what the Two Notes Torpedo does to some extent, except it kind of takes it to the next level. I think Two Notes have released some new firmware coming up where you can have multiple mics and move them around in the, in the virtual space and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they all kind of do the same thing. Uh, it's just, yeah, there's a lot of things right now that make recording a lot easier. And I, I see the, the aux looking like something I'd love to check out at some point if I can get my hands on it. Um, so yeah, it, it's a great recording tool, it looks good. All right, so Ernesto says, hello, is a standard Squire any good or equal as the same as Fender's quality? All right, so the biggest difference between 
Fender and Squire stuff, with excluding like a lot of the classic vibe and also including the classic vibe stuff, you'll find the switches and pots aren't anywhere near as good on the, like if we're talking about the bog standard, the cheapest Squire you can find, uh, there's a huge difference between quality. One thing I noticed even playing the new contemporary series ones was how sharp the frets were on the edges. There were like a few finish flaws that I didn't think were, were perfect. Uh, things that could have been improved. And I go into that on the video that's coming up too. But overall, the gold series squires, if you can get the ones with the, when the logo is gold, anything up from that is good. Any of the ones with the black logo, and this is just generally speaking, this isn't the case 100% of the time you'll find those black label squires aren't really worth buying. You wanna get something else. So Squire, the great thing about Squire is they've got like a million different guitars. Um, my guitar search Saturday I'm doing that goes up tonight, late later tonight. You'll see how great some of those squires are. I actually comment on it saying like, I think you visually they, they're like indistinguishable almost now. So <laughs> have I ever driven over a Goanna? No. Thank you, Shane. Good into a Friday night. Hey, you're welcome, man. Uh, I can't click those links right now, mate, but if you want to uh, send the link, can you? would you mind just emailing it? Uh, I'll have a look in the blues at outlook.com. Squire Standard is pretty good. Uh, Squire Classic Vibes are really popular. Yeah, look, if you can go for a Squire Classic Vibe, you can't go wrong. I, I know like gigging, touring professionals that use them here, and they're unbelievable. They're just great guitars, they really are. Now I can do some Angus and some Malcolm, absolutely. I'm gonna be working on some, some stuff. Uh, <laughs> David says, I tell the difference between the Mexican and the USA fenders is about 60 miles. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Larry, thanks man, great show. What's the best Les Paul style for playability but with no pickups? So you're looking to just, I, I'm not too sure what that means exactly, like if, if you're gonna be replacing the pickups yourself or something. I mean, Epiphones are pretty reliably good, man. I, I, I don't know, I haven't really played any that are junk. Yeah, new guitar, so Saturday tonight, coming up at 11 p.m. our time, Melbourne, Sydney. It's, that, it's bumped back an extra hour because of that daylight savings shift overseas and all that as well. Uh, all right, guys, Clapton uses a Leslie, not a chorus. Well, you might be right about that, but I think in, in the Hyde Park video, you see him click one on, go have a look. Um, so if you wonder what amp I've got and you've missed the start of the stream, you can should be able to just scroll back and watch it. I'll leave this stream up online anyway. So uh, unlike the last one I took down, I'll leave this one up so people can check out what's going on. But thanks again for hanging out, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the guys who used the super chat too. That was really, really awesome. So um, great to see an overwhelming positive response. I'm sure there'll be uh, some thumbs down here. I always expect a few, but if uh, you did enjoy it or if you think it was a good choice, let me know. Give it the thumbs up. If you didn't, give it the thumbs down. So uh, yeah, it, you'll hear this coming up soon. I think the first video that I'll film with it will be the delay pedal back there. And then um, I'll shoot a full-blown demo of this. I'm not sure which one will appear first, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Pancakes McGee says, Shane has started down the path of becoming a shred god. <laughs> At least I didn't get a line six spider. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, guys, rock on. Thanks again for hanging out. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. I got a whole lot of stuff coming up in the next seven days. I think a good mix of stuff between pedals and amps and guitars and all kinds of stuff. So um, yeah, I'll catch you soon guys. Let me turn this off over here.